Welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. I'm Derek Mohanji. Now as Africa stands at the gateway of artificial intelligence revolution, we explore the opportunities and challenges of harnessing technology for development. As African governments explore artificial intelligence adoption, coordinated efforts and strategic investments are key to unlocking its potential. Our, the purpose of our gathering was really to have an honest discussion about how ready governments are to adopt AI and whether they really do have a choice on whether to adopt it and what would the costs be of not adopting it now. And I think the upshot of the discussion was it is absolutely necessary at this point in time that governments embrace AI and start readying their digital infrastructure um, to start leveraging AI for public service. Number two, that there is no time to be lost simply because the world is moving on quite quickly. This call to action is best demonstrated today by the African Union's continental AI strategy, which is pushing for bigger investments in capacity development. It's uh, extremely exciting to see because that means we have a great opportunity to define the narrative of Africa uh, that has always been, you know, we are always the beneficiaries. For the first time, we're in a space where we can be leading these conversations. But on the other side, I feel like the extent at which or, or the extent at which AI is being adopted could also pose a huge challenge in terms of um, the, the, the adoption, in terms of uh, quality uh, of talent for one, and then skilling. So I'm looking at generally our education systems and how we operate. We're not moving fast enough to make sure that our young people are adopting AI as, uh, as fast as possible. AI adoption holds the key to transforming many sectors. So in the same way that we need to understand the hardcore underlining business, I mean, if you look to the industry um, verticals, whether agriculture, healthcare, education, or um, energy, right? You have to have basic understanding or knowledge of these sectors and then know how you can take advantage of technology that makes you more competitive as, as um, as labor or somebody who, who wants to be relevant as a, as a job seeker or, or um, who wants, you know, in, in the job market. The progress that AI promises can be best powered through collaborations. The objective of the AI, first of all, if you look at the, uh, the vision, is really, it is a collaborative, global collaborative platform with an African leadership. And uh, the mission is really is to be able to assist uh, our country members in Africa. And several things among those will be, among those is uh, assist countries in elaborating national AI strategy and, and regional AI strategy. And uh, the second thing, which is part of the objective as well, is to uh, foster the partnership and mobilize investments for the infrastructure in Africa in a way that uh, AI can be accessible to everyone. And it can be also deployed on the continent responsibly. And the other thing is to foster also the research and innovations on the continent on the AI. And the last objective is actually uh, to promote and to foster collaboration in terms of the AI governance. Africa has something to say. I think Africans have been ready. Um, something that Strive uh, mentioned in one of the panels he was on, it's AI is not just about automating things. It's about amplifying things. And it's not just for young people, it's not just for certain industries, it is for many industries. And the demography here, the, just the different cultures, the different people, shows how widespread it can be. And that's exciting, right? It's moving from 
you know, AI is this thing that only affects tech companies yeah. and AI is something that can amplify so many sectors, that can amplify the different work that we're doing, that can amplify just the everyday work that we can do. So there are obviously many discussions around making sure that we're building responsible and ethical AI, and that is important, but let me not say but. And with that conversation is how do we make, how do we make it contextualized? Right? Not just for the young people, not just for specific groups, not just for any sector, but for all of us and for the good of Africa. While AI poses a threat to the traditional job market, it presents greater opportunities. So uh, I think AI adoption has been uh, quite tremendous, um, especially being led by young people, which we know forms you know, a huge demographic of the continent. One of the key things that I've seen at this conference is the monumental convening of the different stakeholders who are thinking about the progress of AI in Africa. You have your massive organizations, big tech here. You have your Googles, Microsoft, AWS, NVIDIA. You have your other organizations that are building AI products in the market and I've seen tons of stands from Kenya, Nigeria, Mali, Togo and I think the beauty of this is the conversation is moving from not just single rooms to expansive rooms to different people that you're meeting at the conference. It's not just the most powerful companies that are talking about AI, it is the normal Mwanainchi who is saying, wow, look at the things we're doing, look at the things we're building. And beyond just a conversation, this is a massive showcase. It's saying, look at what we're doing. Look at how much further we can go with the right resources. So I'm, I'm excited. I think this is just the beginning. It's not the end or the culmination of everything. It's just the beginning. As AI transforms Africa, millions of jobs are at stake. Truth is, some kinds of jobs are already being taken over by AI. And I think it is, and it, the way I like to put it, is um, it's someone who understands maths will use the calculator better than one who doesn't understand the theory of mathematics. To truly benefit from AI, Africa will also need to address persisting challenges. I think the core challenges for investors, I look at it from a point of data, uh, because African data is not as aggregated. And it's a big challenge, especially even with our governments. Uh, much as there are commitments that are being made, the intentionality of implementation is not as, um, it's not as critical as, as it should be. Yet this uh, data is what we need to use to make some of the critical decisions, uh, especially around our governance, education. Uh, at this particular point, um, if I just look at our young people, so just give an example of what we do at Powerland Project where we train, we provide scholarships to train young people in technology. And you'd see that at a one point where we you know, op open a call for applications, we have over 15,000, 20,000 young people applying for this particular scholarship. That shows you the opportunity, the hunger and the need is there. Yeah. But then the capacity versus that, it's not, uh, it's not, yeah, it's not matching on, it's not equivalent. And um, I think this poses a huge question to our governments, to you know, our private sector. How do we now ensure that we are providing the resources that are required, especially to support young people, you know, to come into this space, young African people. And how do we also take control of this narrative so that we become creators, uh, we ensure that our talent is globally competitive, yeah. and also we ensure that our data is sovereign. Despite these challenges, Africa is set to capitalize on AI's opportunities, powering its growing tech ecosystem and youthful population to drive innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, we do uh, video production. We work for advertising also, and we do music production. We also uh, do AI training for people who want to learn how to uh, use AI and uh, want to gain skills in uh, video producing with AI. We see this uh, mind tech as an idea that could scale uh, even up to oil and gas industry, manufacturing, and as well as construction. AI is a tool, actually, to... Okay, for example, at first, when we had those first uh, like engineering programs, uh, it was maybe perceived as, as, cheats, as cheating, right? It's the same as AI today. The potential uh, scalability of the, uh, this solution, first of all, stands, starts with the digital infrastructures. Having uh, a camera is very expensive. 
uh, being on an AI platform is less expensive and it can give the same results. You're building an uh, AI solution which means high computation and as well as um, data acquisition is one of the key uh, primarily um, aspects that we need to first of all focus on. Uh, we have to know first before getting any kind of money from elsewhere, right? So uh, when, the, when the talents are here and they are, they are trained, skilled, uh, they have the possibility to to do, to, to get what they want to get by themselves, right? Being able to talk with Gamiko, uh, it's a mining company in Rwanda, helping us through the way on how do we get data tailored to our own formation to give accurate uh, predictions. We are the one we can, who can create a new African narrative, uh, showing something positive about Africa, showing what we really are, instead of what people want us to be to get up and go look for it. I mean, I mean the, 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 the action has to be done by ourselves. As the continent navigates its AI journey, one thing is certain, the future will be shaped by strategic decisions made today. CNBC Africa will continue to keep you posted on the latest developments from the world of business. I've been your host, Derek Mohanji.